Welcome to a 12-2, and this is the deal. We're going to get the whole thing done today. We just finished correcting 12-1. You're retaining that until Monday, and you need to hand in your assignments on Monday completely done, ready for the quiz. You're not done with your assignments. You don't get a quiz. Your quiz is zero. Okay, so be done. Okay, and know how to because that quiz is going to be taken with notes on the board, and that's it. Those are the only notes you'll be provided. Okay, chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. Theorem 12.4, within a circle or an incongruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent arcs. And they're like, what? This is a central angle. The central angle is the angle made with the center of the circle. And when I have congruent central angles, that they're saying that these congruent central angles, they define arcs that are congruent. Now, the reason why these theorems are side by side is because we get to look at them and we're going to talk about their converses. So I've got arcs that are congruent and I'm able to go from congruent arcs and show that the angles that define them are congruent as well. Yeah. Not all the time. That, that arc A, D, and B, C are not always congruent. They would be if those first ones are made by diameters. Okay, but I can't say that all the time. I, I will not say that because you got to look at the situation and determine what is making the central angle, what is making those other arcs. Um, just like everything else we've had, everything that we've learned up to this point is still fair game. So if you have vertical angles and those arcs defined through those vertical angles are the same, okay, you got to keep that in mind too. But if we don't have those straight sides, People have a tendency to say, oh, then this is congruent as well, and it's not. you got to look at the situation as it goes. It could be, but it's not a guarantee. Okay. Now, in this next one, as we're going through in Theorem 12.5, within a circle or in a congruence, in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. And that's the difference. And people are looking at the pictures like, well, Bloom, you put down the same picture. What's the deal? Well, you, you stutter... Pasting? What's, what's going on? Notice this and this. BA, segment BA and segment CD have been added to our picture because those are chords. Chords have endpoints on the circle, and that's what we started out with. A chords is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay. Well, if I have two chords that are defined by angles that create congruent arcs, the chords that are defined there are also congruent, and that's what they're saying. If I have an ang two angles that are congruent, the arcs are congruent. If I have two chords that are congruent, I shouldn't say arcs, I said chords are congruent. If I have two chords that are congruent, then the angles that define them should be congruent as well. Now, these are converse theorems. The hypothesis and conclusion switch, okay? When we're doing this, keep in mind, within a circle or congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if I just have two chords that are congruent and the circles are congruent, the radiuses are the same, then the arcs that the endpoints of the chords define are also congruent. And I have the converse of that. If I have two congruent arcs, then the chords that connect their endpoints are congruent, okay? Now, I've got a lot of people going, boom, that's like six properties. No, it's three properties. We're looking at the properties and their congruence. We've got to chunk them together as we learn these, okay? It makes it easier to digest, and it's easier for us to, like, do them quickly. Now, this next thing. In problem A, it's pretty exhaustive, okay? But I want to be clear about some stuff. In B, you guys are going to answer B. But in problem A, when I talk about chords, I'm talking about PQ being congruent <laughs> to AB. Because in this particular case, it brings a uh, situation to light. These are diameters. I now have the creation of vertical angles. And I have diameters in both situations here with congruent circles. So I know my chords PQ and my chord AB is also congruent to SR, you know, segment SR and segment DC because they're diameters. If they were not diameters, I could not make this generalization. 
okay? Now, because they're diameters, I get to pick all diameters. Hey, look, PR, QS, TB, AC. Boom, got them done. Diameters have straight. They're cords that contain the center of the circle. Let's let's just go with that definition. Cords that contain the center of the circle. Yes, sir? How did you know that SI was congruent? How did I know? Because our cord, from what we just went through, is defined by a vertical angle, and those vertical angles are congruent to each other because we pull in vertical angles. And I know that right away because they cross at the center of the circle, not just because they're just, you know, in the circle themselves. They have to cross at the center. The central angles are the same, and therefore the chords will be defined as the same. And that's how I knew. It's all about those properties and rereading them, being familiar with looking at a picture and going, hey, I can, I can like, use this property, this property, this property. Okay. Now, arcs. I have the basic four that involve this, and, but because of the diameters and supplementary angles, I have four more. So the basic four arcs, PQ, SR, AB, DE. Because those are defined by our central angles that are vertical angles and congruent to each other, okay, initially. I also have arc PS, arc QR, arc AD, and arc BC. Not because I feel like it, because of the properties that are instilled in this supplementary angles, okay, on the arcs on the two circles that are identical. I now have eight arcs, and four of them are red. The four red ones are congruent to each other, and the four black ones that I outlined are congruent to each other. Yes, sir. No, you know, because of the nature of the circle and the symmetry that's involved, you know, like when we did triangles before, if the triangles didn't have some sort of symmetry, we had to talk about a certain order. Because of the circle and the symmetry involved, the order is, can flip, okay, as we go through. Now, angles, for the same reason, I get angle PXQ and angle RXS congruent to those two are congruent because they're vertical angles. But now, because arc PQ is congruent to arc RAB, I know angle AEB and angle DEC are congruent as well. And those are the four. I mean, I know those other four angles are there, but I think I've made my point. Okay. Do you see the arcs and the angles opposite them and the things that are congruent and why they are? And I'll lift that up so people can see better. It looks like you guys are craning over the top of trees there. Try to get the last few leaves. A bunch of giraffes trying to reach for food. Now, I just went through properties. Properties that we need to be very familiar with in order to apply the principles that of chapter 12. The better reviewed you are of these properties, the easier this is. This is an adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing chapter. It's not about hocus pocus. It's about you knowing what to do and when to do it with what situation you're provided. And in order to know those things, you have to spend time with notes. If you're one of those people, I've never spent time with notes before, how is it working for you? Because I know it's not. Please make sure you spend time with your notes. Reread them. Know the properties. Know the connections of the pictures and the words. If you're not sure, ask questions. But here's the one that's really the kicker. It's vocabulary. I can explain it as much as I, I can over and over, but if you don't actually try to reread it and explain it to yourself and try to you know, internalize it, no one's going to make you read it or make you learn it. you got to know it yourself. Okay, and that's the thing, that's the problem about this chapter because of the drudgery that that's involved. The drudgery, oh, it just stinks. If you know that though, the assignments, they're quick, they're fast, because it's not about how hard the math is, it's about you being able to recall what to do and when to do it. Okay, and that's practice. With anything, you gotta practice to become better at it. It's your turn, do B.
Do B. You got B. You've got three questions you're answering, and I'm going to start them for you. Go ahead, finish them. Number, notation, 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 notation. Don't shortcut notation. Chords, FD, are you okay with that? Chord with WY, FD, or DF, I don't care which one, because the order. Arcs, YW, my DF, or FD, arc FD, are you okay with this? Okay, hey, angles, angle WXY, and hey, what the heck, I've got angle FY, FED, or DEF, the center of the circle is the center of your angle. That's it. <coughs> Are there any questions? Now, remember, it's all about properties. This is a heavy, heavy, heavy duty property chapter. But if you know properties, you got recall, you're going to totally rock. Okay? Now, within a circle or in congruent circles, chords equidistant from the center or centers are congruent to each other. Chords equidistant from the center or centers, depending on two different circles that are identical or the same circle, are congruent. Now, people are like, oh, I don't know when people would use this. Okay. Well, they'd use this in digs when they determine the size of dinnerware. When they're like, hey, look, we have pottery fragments. Holy cow, what they'll do, they'll like look at this fragment that's broken. Okay, generally it looks like this. They'll put in a, a cord, and they'll have a midpoint of that cord, and they'll draw a perpendicular segment from it. And they'll put in another cord, and they'll have a midpoint and draw a perpendicular segment from that. Well, you know where those two segments that are perpendicular to that cord, midpoints, meet? That's the center of the circle. It's one of the properties we're going to learn about in the next seven minutes. Okay, applications of these is just limited to your resourcefulness and creativity. I always get people, well, when am I going to use this? Like, well, you know, you can think about a lot of when you're not, but when you come across a situation, you're going to use it. We have people who make breakfast bars, you know, that little circular counter they sit at, they're going to use the properties of Chapter 12 as a carpenter to make it happen. Okay, and that's how they know. It's And when they use it in design, you're going to use properties of Chapter 12 because you already know what everything looks like. You're just going to go to manufacturer and you're not going to go, oh, yeah, this doesn't work. It, you already know what it's going to work like because it's in the design that way. So make sure you're focusing on how it's going to be applied. Here, in number two, how do we apply 12.7? Because we got the original theorem and its converse. Well, if I've got a situation that distance, perpendicular distance back is the same, that can be contained in the diameters. Okay, I got the diameters contained. I know this half is 12.5. What do you think this half is? 12.5, right? So what's 12.5 plus 12.5? Boom. And now, I'm going to talk about it because I want to talk about it in relation to notation. SR equals PR because of theorem 12.7. SR is the same as PQ plus QR using segment addition postulate. Okay, so from chapter 1. Then I've got numbers, 12.5 is both of them, and that's how we got our 25. Now, I did that to review notation, but I also had some people go, how do they get 25? So I just slowed it down and explained what happened. This is all about properties, okay? So if we look at this next one, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords are equidistant from the center or centers. Well, if I have two chords that are congruent, then OE and OF, the distances of the two chords from the center, are the same, right? Well, here's the deal. This is how fast this is. You ready? Done. X is 16. Why? Because the congruent chords are equidistant from the center. How did you know those chords were congruent? Because 18 plus 18 is 36, and that other chord is 36. That's how I knew. That's the follow-up that I'm doing. 
I just applied a property and I explained myself. Why do I write it down the way I do? So when you reread your notes to prepare your note card to prepare for a quiz or test, you know what property that we just used. Okay, I put them right underneath each other. It's all about properties and me throwing it back at you. Okay, that's 16 because the distance, perpendicular distance from the center is the same for congruence. Now, in a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and it bisects its arcs. Okay, and people are like, what? So if I have this situation, this is the result. And people are like, well, they look the same. Sorry about that, guys. That's the result. They look the same. What's the deal? Well, think about as I go through. I have a diameter. It's perpendicular to a chord. When that happens, it is the perpendicular bisector of the chord, and it also evenly splits up the arcs that chord defines so that they're the same as well. Okay? So, in four, this is what I know. By the way, put this V in there. You guys got to put V in there. Put V in there. I neglected to have that in your notes. I got to remember to put that in. I know if in circle D, ZX is the diameter of the circle and segment ZX is perpendicular to segment WY. Well, I know ZX is the diameter. It's a chord that goes through the center. I know that they're perpendicular, so I know that WV, bless you, and YV are congruent. And I also know that the arc that is made by Core WY, that arc WY, that splits up by WX and XY, is also congruent, those half arcs, because of what we just read in 12.8. I just applied a property. That's how I'd use it. You'll be asked, hey, what do you know about this? And you'll look, hey, what, what, what things exist? Do I have a diameter? Are they perpendicular? Do I have chords? What can I say about them? And that's the type of stuff you'll be asked to do in your assignment today. You're going to be applying properties. That's how you get the numbers. I all have a bunch of people just coming up with numbers. Well, that's what I think Bloom did. No, I'm doing it based on properties that were preceding the examples. So if you got find the example and you're still confused, read the properties above it. Okay, that'll help you out. Yes, sir. I asked you to put that in. Yeah, I asked you to put that in while we're doing that. Because it's something that I neglected to have in your notes so I can talk about it with some sort of discernible understanding. Okay? Now, as we're going today, you'll notice the theme. I am done with properties, kind of. That was a very heavy property section. Okay? When I have three segments that come together and they make a right triangle, I have two out of the three measurements of that triangle. What thing could I use to find the third measurement? Ideas? C squared, right? So we're talking about Pythagorean theorem. There we go. The P word, Pythagorean theorem. Check it out. I have a right triangle. But I have this whole length is 14. How could I use that 14 to help me find a length? Yes. Only a diameter goes through the center. That's not going through the center. It's just a chord length. It has a perpendicular bisector because that segment 3 is on the perpendicular bisector that is perpendicular to the chord that's 14. And we just read those properties in that perpendicular bisector of the chord, if it's a diameter, cuts that 14 into two equal parts, 7 and 7. So now I'm using properties that we just went through, and I can use my extension of Pythagorean theorem to find the missing piece. Now, yes, sir? How do you know that the triangle is at the center of the section? Let's talk about that. How did I know? You see K? See that dot there with K? When I have a dot, circles will be named by the dot with a letter by them. So that's the center of the circle itself. And then I know that KN is emanating from that center, and KN can be part of the diameter. Okay? Well, if that's the diameter, it's splitting that chord into two equal parts, from 14 down to 7. 
So now, after I make that application a property, I'm off to the, the real world axis of finding R because I'm a pirate, right? Now, are you okay that I get 7.6? Go ahead, do B. Pay attention to it. We're using properties still. You got a chord, you got a diameter, you got a segment that can be contained inside a diameter to help you out. So check it out, set it up, and if you're not kind of sure, just do your setup in pencil and we'll see where it's coming from. But I'm doing the same thing, okay, here to help us with properties. It's all about you applying a property. <clears throat> that way I'm safer when I walk around. I don't knock things down. <laughs> Boom, killed my Chromebook, Mom. Okay, you ready? You ready? You set? I have the following property. This is my diameter, right? It can be contained inside. Be advised, a diameter, perpendicular cord, cuts the cord into two equal parts. Um, this is my opportunity to say, not all cords are 14, okay? Now, Half of 18, the diameter, is 9. I'm looking for X. Are you okay with how I busted everything up? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, no. Are you all right where I got my numbers? I am now going to take A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to plug in 9. I'm going to plug in... 7, I'm looking for X, another pirate thing, because it marks the spot, right? It's like you're a pirate today. Are you okay with 81 and 49 are coming from, and I find their difference? Yes, no, maybe. Now remember, it's frustrating when you're doing these. Reread your notes. Check out, because I'm using the same properties. I'm not, I'm not making up them different each time, okay? But it is an application of Pythagorean theorem. I give you a hint in C, go. This is C top, that's C bottom, okay? C top, I'm, I'm sorry, I started typed. But are you okay with 5.7 for B? Yes or no? Okay, you guys got C. I give you a hint in C on how you gotta treat the material we're working with. Go ahead. Doing great. Keep it up. Now, when we do these, I have people just are motoring along and they found X and they're really like, yes! Keep in mind, I got 15, I got 8, I've got a right triangle. I'm going to set this up like this. Please note, I'm using A, not my variable that I'm supposed to look for. Hmm, methinks there's something up with this problem. As I solve, I got 225 and 64, I find their difference. Okay, after I find their distance, I get 161. I gotta take the square root of both sides. But what I have endeavored to find was just this green section. This is the square root of 161, right there. But so is this. Keep in mind, up until this point, here in R for A, I didn't have to do anything special with this side. 
R was the whole thing I found. That's why I put it in the Pythagorean theorem. Here, X was supposed to be found. I suppose we should probably stay with red. That probably X is the only thing I was finding. That's why I used it in the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? I didn't have to do anything fancy. I did the fancy stuff here. And I did fancy stuff here. But with the Pythagorean answer, I didn't have to do anything crazy. But now, every one of these was Pythagorean theorem. This one is different because I got to do half. So I've got to double that and make sure I know that's 25.4 versus 12.7. Are you okay with that conclusion? Now, I always have students go, they're so different. Gosh, every one of them. You guys got to understand, what did we set up? We set up a relationship that's a right triangle, and we're allowed to use Pythagorean theorem to do the solve. Okay? Now, this relationship with right triangles, what I want you to know about is here. First of all, you got to make this change. I have another typo in this. I forgot the B and I forgot BE is 15. Put it in there. You got to know that it's 15. Do you see that dotted line? If I got BE is 15, what's the dotted line's length, you think, maybe? 15. Why? Because both radiuses, so they got to be the same in the same circle. I have students, when I do this problem, totally look at me and go, there's no flipping way you taught me how to do this problem. Everything was a right triangle, man. I go, no, look, 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 look. I know. Check it out. We, we used our drawing skills to close up the hypotenuse, the radius, to make our right triangle. This is 15. Do you know stuff that can help? Because now, remember, Y is still in a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. And since this is 11 and this is 11, that's a right triangle because it splits it in two equal parts. If I have a segment or a part of a segment that is a bisector of another chord, that segment is part of the diameter, and therefore it's a perpendicular bisector. And I got a right triangle here, and guess what? It's yet another application of Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, 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 theorem. Go, get her done. And after you do the second C, get D done, or do D, however you want to do it. Do your duty on D. Get her done. Because that's the type of problem, and that's how you'll see it on ACT, SCT, MCA. You'll see it on my test. You'll see it on my final. I promise. Make sure you're familiar with how it's going to be packaged for you. Ready? 11, Y, and 15. People are like, no way, this is so cool. That's like 10.4, square root of 104, and I got 10.2. Are you okay with that? The only piece of information you need right now is to know that this problem, 10, is the length of the entire chord, chord, chord. Okay, go ahead, get, ten, get that one done while I pass this off. Now, on what I just passed out, if you're online and you're reading this next thing, um, it's already been changed. But unfortunately, my changes online don't happen instantaneously on things I've already copied off. So you guys need to know that 7 through 9, the directions are find the measure of arc AB. 
You need to know that. Okay? It becomes way easier when you actually know what you're supposed to find. I find that, that that's helpful. Uh, in problems 10 and 11, you need to find the value x on your assignment. Okay? On your assignment. Those are the things you need to have. I've got three problems left, and I'm sorry we've taken some time today. Monday, I don't have anything new. I have reviewing 12.1, 12.2, 12.3, and I will answer any questions you have on those, okay? I will have the 12.4 notes ready to go for people who are all done and don't want to waste their time. So that way you can look at notes and you can go after the assignment and start it so you don't have to do anything outside of class. Okay, but then towards the end of the hour, we will do a, well, 15 question quiz. Okay, and that's what will happen on that. Now, in D, you should have recognized, hopefully, that this was X, this was 5, and you're off to the races. Okay, are there any questions about that? One of the hardest questions I can put on a test when I don't have it connected, <laughs> because people during a testing situation won't recognize that that radius is consistent all the way across. Okay, make sure you're careful about that because now it's just, oh, I'm just applying properties. Okay, that segment that can be contained in the diameter that's perpendicular to the cord cuts the cord in half. Okay. We're going right down to 12.9 for uh, theorem 12.9 right now. Okay, we're going to skip this. By the way, this is an application of guess what? I, I don't know if you've seen the theme today. Okay, for those who are wondering, it's an application of Pythagorean theorem. Okay, here, in a circle, if a diameter bisects a cord that is not a diameter, then it is perpendicular to the cord. If I know that a diameter has bisected a cord, a cord, that cord can't be another diameter because diameters bisect each other all the time, no matter what the angle. It's got to be another cord. Okay. If it's been bisected, they're perpendicular to each other. End of story. Okay? That's a fact. Nothing else people are like, well, what do you mean? That's it. It's like when someone introduces themselves and they tell you their name, do you say, no way, that's, that's not your name. You just accept it and you move on. Maybe you have a hard time pronouncing it, but you move on. Here, the converse of that. If a circle, in a, in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a cord contains the center of the circle, in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a cord contains the center of the circle. That's where we do that thing with being an archaeologist to determine the radius of a dinner plate. Okay? That's where that came from. Now, this is all about constructions and being able to get a construction done. If I have two circles that have centers, if I, when we did this for a semester, we did this with perpendicular bisector. You know, we are able to find the perpendicular bisector of a segment. That's completely and totally based on properties of circles. Okay, the distance of the segments been cut in half. As a matter of fact, the bisector itself has been cut in half by the other segment. Okay, as we go, and people look at me when I do this and go, "Why are you doing that?" Because this problem is the same deal. I'm asking, "Hey, what's half of 12?" So I've got NO, half of 12, I got 6, I got 6. Okay, half of 12. What's half of 8? This is 4, this is 4. I wonder if there's something in the world that could exist to let me know what that radius is. What do you think might, might, might be the thing I use today? Being that we've used it nine times already. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, don't count me on that. It just feels like I've done it a thousand billion times, a thousand billion, okay, trillion, thousand billion. Okay, so we've got that going on. Six squared plus four squared equals R squared. I plug them in, 36, 16, 52, and I got to take the square root, right? And I pop in my calculator something more than seven, but less than eight. Okay, so I've got that going. Now I'm going to skip this next one because I got one left, and it's one of my favorite problems to do. And I want you guys to try it and think about it, think on it. Now we got to do it. We get, it's part of the video. So you ready? I'm given information here about concentric circles. Concentric circles are circles with the same center. 
Okay, now we went over concentric circles for the first time in chapter 6, and we did it again in chapter 5 um, previously, and I think we've done it since in chapter 10. We probably talked about concentrics, but not formally the way we did in 5 and 6. Two concentric circles have the radii of 6 and 12 millimeters. Okay, a segment tangent to the smaller circle is a chord of the larger. When we do these problems, by the way, set it up simply. I got a chord. You okay with that? I just drew a chord in. It's a tangent to the smaller, but a chord in the larger. What do you know about tangent lines and radiuses at the point of tangency? What do you know about the angle? They're a right angle. Crazy, right? Now, I know that we have a radius of the bigger circle. What if I decide to put that radius right there and call that 12? And this 6. You guys go ahead, get it done. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Thank you so much for your patience. We got that going on. Tomorrow we'll have some time to talk about your assignments in class, and we'll be able to get that going. You guys have a great day.